Welcome! In this video I'll show you how to control Studio One from Impact LX Mini. With Nectar DAW integration you can control transport functions, change tracks, navigate projects, open windows and even control VST instruments and insert effects directly from the hardware. Studio One instruments are pre-mapped according to LX Mini screen printing so you can take control right away. We'll also look at assigning and controlling third-party plugins and how to assign drum sounds to the pads. And now let's dive in and take control of Studio One. Please make sure that you've installed the Nectar DAW integration software for Studio One on your computer. You'll find it in your Nectar user account when you register LX Mini. The download also includes a user guide that covers all setup steps. You can control 21 DAW functions from LX Mini's transport bar without reaching for the mouse. There are three layers of functionality. When shift is off, the buttons control transport functions according to their labels. You can activate the click, rewind or forward in one bar steps, switch the cycle on and off, and of course control start, stop, and record. If you activate shift, it lights up blue and the features printed in blue right above the buttons are active. You can open or close the mixer window with S1, the instrument plugin window with S2, if an instrument is assigned to the selected track, otherwise nothing will happen, and Studio One's browser with S3. The second row is now assigned to track and patch selection. Track up and track down, navigate through your tracks. And patch up and patch down, step through an instrument's Studio One patches like you can see here. This works right away for internal plugin instruments. Third-party plugins only work if you import the patches and their patches appear in Studio One's instrument header. You won't be able to browse a plugin's proprietary library. If you press transport buttons while holding Shift, you get access to a third level of functions. For the top row, they are printed in white next to the buttons. Undo will undo your last edit. You can also set left and right locators and jump to their positions. First, navigate to the desired start position with rewind or forward. Now press and hold shift and track up to set the left locator. Then forward to your end point and use shift and track down to set the right locator. Use cycle to switch the loop between your locators on and off. Now hold shift and press rewind or shift and forward to move the playback cursor to the start or end of your cycle. If you hold shift and press play, you can switch the pre-count on and off. You can also switch Studio One's IQ quantize on and off by holding shift and pressing record. The big pot on the left always controls your selected track's volume or when you hold shift, the master volume. Now let's tweak a sound from the hardware and make it our own. Activate Shift, select an instrument track with track up or down and open the plugin view with S2. To control a plugin, its window must be open and in focus. Ensure the selected control surface in the top right corner of the instrument editor is Impact LX Mini Control and highlighted yellow. I'll pick the Mojito synth and activate LX Mini's arpeggiator so we have something playing while I show you some of the standard factory assignments. Press Page to select the default page indicated by the blue LED. On this page you'll find our factory mappings. For pre map plugins, the screen printing on LX Mini is a guide for the assignments. For Mojito we have mapped Oscillator 1 Pitch, Sub Oscillator Level, Oscillator Mode 1 controls the LFO speed for the oscillator modulation. Oscillator Mode 2 controls the LFO speed for the filter modulation. Cutoff, Resonance, Envelope Amount and the LFO knob is assigned to Filter LFO Amount. You might notice that parameters not always react immediately when you move a control. This is to avoid parameter jumps. We call that soft takeover. Values only change once you pick them up at the currently set value. Let's pick up cutoff to show you how it works. As you can see, the cutoff software control is at 25%, but the knob on LX Mini is at maximum, so they don't match. 
When you touch a knob, the two LEDs below the large pot update to show you the current soft takeover status. If the left LED shines red, you need to move the pot left until both LEDs light up green to pick the value up. If you now turn the pot again, cutoff follows. Let's try the next control. Now the right LED is red, so I have to move the pot up until it turns green. Pick a value up by moving the control until you pass the currently set value. If you'd like to control a synth, but there doesn't seem to be anything assigned or you don't like the mapping, no worries, we'll simply create our own in the next chapter. Assigning your own controls, changing existing maps or even creating your own is really easy. Let me show you how that works. First, make sure instrument mode is selected, that the controller is in focus for the plugin and that recently touched is activated in Studio One's parameter display drop-down menu. I'll use the Mai Tai synth for this. Controlling parameters from the knobs makes sound tweaking much more intuitive, especially setting envelopes. And assignment only takes a minute. 16 parameters can be assigned in total. 8 to LX Mini's default page and 8 to the user page. You toggle between them by pressing the page button. The default page already has parameters including filter cutoff and resonance assigned. As I don't want to change the factory map, I switch to the user page with a page button. It is currently unassigned. I'll now assign Mai Tai's amp envelope and envelope 2 to this page. To assign a parameter for control from the hardware, press and hold shift while moving the hardware control on Alex Mini. Keep holding shift and move the software control you want to assign in the open plugin UI. Then release shift. That's it. I just assigned the amp envelopes attack to Alex Mini's pot 1. And now I'll assign the other knobs in the row to the remaining envelope parameters. Just like in any good cooking show, I have already assigned the lower row to control envelope 2. That's it. Mapping done. I can now control the envelope parameters like on a hardware synth. The mapping is safe with Studio One and will be recalled every time you create an instrument track with this plugin instrument. For third party VST or AU plugins, mapping works the same way. Let me quickly open up Serum and assign oscillator A controls. Please note that some parameters in Serum, such as oscillator warp or filter types, cannot be assigned for control. What parameters are exposed for external control is up to the developer. There are also some plugins that only give access to macros or need special setup, so should something not work as expected, this could be why. Let's pick another patch in Mai Tai now and try our expanded map. I'll choose Bad Buzz to show you how easy it is to make a sound your own. Let's switch to the default page and change some oscillator and filter settings around first. Now I'll switch back to the user page and tweak the envelopes. Normally I'd of course spend a bit more time on this, but this is quite usable already. Sound creation is much more intuitive when you can tweak multiple parameters at once. In instrument mode you can also control a selected track's effects inserts from Alex Mini. So let's beef up the arpeggiated synth line with a couple of effects. First I select the instrument track that's running the ARP. It's the Mojito synth that we've been using earlier. Make sure instrument is selected on Alex Mini. In Studio One's inspector you can see that I've already inserted Presonus Pro EQ, Red Light Distortion and Compressor in preparation. Let me activate the inserts. Now press Shift and Page to open and focus the channel editor for the selected track. Make sure Shift is off and toggle through the inserted effects by pressing Instrument and Rewind or Forward. All internal effects are pre-mapped for instant control on the default page. 
Like with instruments, you can use the user page for additional assignments. Also the mapping process is the same. Assigned parameters are automatically stored with Studio One system files for recall. To switch back to instrument control, press instrument again. Now let's bring up Studio One's Impact XT drum plugin and show you how to assign MIDI notes to pads. Using Impact Alex Mini's Pad Maps 1 and 2, you're able to play many drum instruments straight away. But you might want to change the pad assignment to better suit your needs. Here's how. Press Shift and Internal to activate Setup Mode. Press E1 on your keyboard to select Pad Learn. Now choose a pad by hitting it once and pick the sound you want to assign by playing the key on the keyboard. Use the Octave buttons if necessary. Hit the next pad and repeat the steps to assign more sounds. The assignment is immediate. You can verify it by playing the pad. When done, exit pad learn mode by pressing either instrument, internal or function. Your new assignments are retained in memory until you change them or load another pad map. If you'd like to store your assignment in one of Alex Mini's four pad maps, hold shift and press internal to activate setup mode. Next, press F1 on the keyboard to select Save Pad Map. Now the lower pad row lights up in four different colors, one for each pad map. Press the pad you want to save your map to. It starts blinking. Press C3 Enter to save the map and exit setup. To load a pad map, simply hold down Internal, then press one of the four pads labeled Pad Map. The pad's color will change according to the selected map. The pad maps are a great way to have instant access to up to 32 node assignments. All right, that's all for now. We hope this overview was helpful. Thanks for watching.